The step beyond discipleship is to relationship and you're developing more intimacy with God. So the crux here is to join with others in small teams, just like you and I right now, where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. And so when you have two or three right there, uh, you have God in the midst. And a lot of Jesus's work was done, not just with the multitude, it was done uh, like that woman in the well, at the well. Mm -hmm. It was done with uh, the, the blind man. It was done just that one-on-one where it was small groups that he ministered unto. And that's why I consider myself a, a, a spiritual bodybuilder. And so he put me here to help build the body of Christ. And I do that in this trilogy. I do that in my Haven for Ravens. I do that in my podcast. I do that in my one-on-ones. I do that with my preaching, my teaching, and whatever it is that Favor by the Father Ministries does. That's what it is. And so I, I talk about how that triad relationship, uh, once you have a disciple, you, you make a disciple, and then that person does the same, it replicates itself, it's cyclical, and then it spews out, and each one continues to do the same, and it keeps growing. It's like little pods all over the place, keeps growing. And that's building the kingdom of God. Hello, everybody. Dennis Allen with The Disciple Dilemma. Well, I guess I've got to start this podcast off telling you that our guest today is a really, really big fan of the Western, the TV Western Bonanza. You'll get more about that later. Also an author, pastor, podcaster, and founder of Favored by the Father Ministries. She heads up the Unbox podcast, but above and beyond all that, she is one wonderful discipleship resource. She gets this stuff. And we're going to have a terrific conversation with Dr. Barbara Breon today, pastor, author, podcaster, founder of Favor by the Father's Ministry. And we're going to get to talk a lot about discipleship. It's really deep and well done. Here we go. Dr. Barbara Breon, we are so grateful that you would join us on the Disciple Dilemma. It's just great to be here. I mean, I'm tickled because I've met someone in your personage who has the same fervor for discipleship and disciple making that I have. And that's delightful in itself. Folks, I got to tell you, when I'm looking at this, here, here's a lady who's got, here's three of her books, along with this life of a preacher, pastor, author, podcaster, speaker, who has been working. So I'm in the minor league. I'm going to try really hard to keep up. You'll just have to pardon me. I'll do the best I can. Barbara, you have thought a lot about discipleship mm -hmm. and you're live in a congregation. Thank you for your service, by the way. Thank you. Because I've heard a lot of people tell me it's a combat zone out there for pastors. No comment. <laughs> I want us to kind of zoom out first and think about the national and the regional idea of discipleship. If I were to just ask you to give me a couple of thoughts, how do you think discipleship is doing in the West these days? What kind of grade would you give us? And what do you what do you think's going on? Mm. I couldn't give it a B. I'm a former teacher as well. So I hand out grades according to merit, not according to grace. Mm -hmm. Grace the Lord. <laughs> uh, but it would have to it teeters around a C or a C minus, maybe even a D. Because I believe, even in something I preached yesterday, that it gets covered up. Discipleship, disciple making, the real great commission and what our purpose is as created beings for Christ to go into the world and make disciples of all nations, teaching, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and, and uh, the Holy Ghost. In the name of Christ somehow we've covered up with our traditions and sometimes with our habits and sometimes with things that we simply want to do. We've covered up the real nugget of disciple making. 
salvation. And in a sermon I recently preached, like less than 24 hours ago, because this is a Monday and that was just yesterday, I talked about how the main thing is to uh, give the word of God to people and make sure that salvation is in check. That's the work. You have to have the will to do the work, but you can't do the work if you don't know what it is. And the work is the work of salvation. And so with me thinking that salvation is the key, salvation is the work. Jesus died for us to be saved from our sin. That's what we reach people with, with our conversations, with our lives, with our writing, with our livelihoods, with whatever our career choices are. We minister in all kinds of ways. For what reason? These are all tools. Regardless of what the platform, they're all tools to reach somebody for Christ. To me, it's been cloaked, covered over, and not talked about. We don't talk about salvation in terms of saving grace for our souls that we need to be talking about. We're doing programs. We're maybe having fundraisers. We're having uh, all kinds of conferences and we get together and we do this and we do that as collective bodies. We do a lot of things um, interpersonally and we're talking about maybe how to make people feel good and feel better about themselves. And even I in my podcast talk about identity, but it's the identity in Christ. Who is it that you are innately created to be mm. as a manifested blessing of Christ. Mm. And so a lot of that regionally, internationally, nationally, and I went in all the way out and then back in again on purpose because it's a yo-yo kind of thing going on. And that's not the religion. That's not the Christ uh, mandate. It's supposed to be consistent. It's supposed to be solid. He lived. He died. He was raised again, he sits at the right hand of God to save us from sin. He makes petition for us. And if we forget that that is our truth, then what are we standing for? You remind me of one of my favorite pastors in Fort Worth, Texas. His name is Dr. Tony Evans. Yeah. Tony is, has got a fabulous saying that I think matches up with exactly what you're saying. Jesus doesn't need more Christians. What Jesus needs is more disciples. Yes. You have written books that talk precisely to what you just mentioned a moment ago. And I love the fact that you grabbed identity. Because these three books really point to identity. Would you give us the Cook's tour of your progressive work here on the subject of identity and discipleship as we look at these books? I'll be happy to do that because this is my heart. And uh, the first one, Reach Me With Smiles, a handbook for developing disciple makers, uh, first written, published in 2005. Basically, it's like a Sunday school handbook, hmm. a Sunday school teacher training handbook, but it's also for individuals who want to read and study the Bible to dig deeper into the Word of God. And SMILES is an acronym. Uh, if the student, if the learner, so it's independently done, if it's in a small group, if it's in a parochial school, if it's in a public school, if it's in the Sunday school, any kind of teaching relationship that you have in the corporate world, business world, anywhere that you are the teacher leader and there is a student that is learning from you. It could be parent, child, you're teaching and they're learning. It could be auntie, it could be neighbor, it could be anybody. Uh, stimulate me, motivate me, involve me, lead me, love me, encourage me and strengthen me. And if you do these things, you will reach me with smiles for the Lord. You will be joyfully leading me and escorting me into ways of engaging the mm. text. It's all about digging into the Bible 
and finding out what the Bible actually says, not what we want it to say, how to look into the context of the original writing. And it's you've got the tools right in front of you in the Bible. So this is a handbook that could walk you step by step. It talks about different techniques that you can learn because I am a, a retired reading teacher. And so a lot of my um, reading teacher things may be embedded in there. And so uh, the whole idea of, of teaching to a person rather than teaching to a topic. If you're teaching, it's not what are you teaching? It's whom are you working with? Are you in touch with the individual? Are you interrelating in a way that makes them feel important and needed and necessary? And you matter to Christ. For those of us who, who've been talking on the Disciple Dilemma lately, one of the conversations we have is the Old Testament tradition, which Jesus modeled, mm -hmm. of the Bet Sefer, which is essentially elementary school for discipling. It's what you need to know and the community you need to be involved in to begin your journey as a disciple. And you're saying we need to be able to teach, interact with these people human beings. Some of them are going to be enthusiastic students, I guess. Yeah. And you were speaking about working a minute ago. There's going to be some skeptics that are like, you know, I don't know who you are, but I'm, I'll am i give you a shot. Reach Me With Smiles is an attempt to try to say, this is how we live, not only in Sunday school, right, but out in the community and out in our workplace, right? Absolutely. So this will help the person trying to be a disciple maker to do it better. Wow. And then... I loved reading your book, Beyond Discipleship. Let's talk about that. What's going on there? That's great um, information here because the end of Beyond Disciple, the end of Reach Me With Smiles is the beginning of Beyond Discipleship because once you have become a disciple and you are experiencing, manifesting all the blessings and fruit of that mm. lifestyle, mm not something to do, a lifestyle, then you want more and more of it. You're spreading your seeds. You are sharing the faith. You have others that have um, grown in Christ because of your relationship with each other. You see the Lord in your lives together. You study the word together. You talk about God. You do all these things in relationship with each other. So here we talk about triads. And so the step beyond discipleship is to relationship and you're developing more intimacy with God. So the crux here is to join with others in small teams, just like you and I right now, where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. And so when you have two or three right there, uh, you have God in the midst and a lot of Jesus's work was done, not just with the multitude. It was done uh, like that woman in the well at the well. Mm -hmm. It was done with uh, the, the blind man. It was done just that one on one where it was small groups that he ministered unto. And so I, I talk about how that triad relationship, uh, once you have a disciple you, you make a disciple, and then that person does the same. It replicates itself. It's cyclical, and then it spews out, and each one continues to do the same, and it keeps growing. It's like little pods all over the place, keeps growing, and that's building the kingdom of God. Those are those relationships, developing intimacy, and the more you spread, the more you grow, the more you sow, oh, the closer you get to God. He keeps showing you ways that he's pleased with you despite the hardships. And there's some rusty, crusty, thorny people out there that aren't going to be willing to accept no. what you say. Oh, yes, <laughs> they're out there uh, somewhere uh, on, that, on that rocky road where you spread your seeds and, okay, well, okay, that's them. But I did my part. And so what's happened to disciple making I can't stop doing my part in the process because someone else is not willing to receive it. 
I'll shake the dust off my feet and keep on going. And so in the world that I live in, whether it's regional, whether it's national, whether it's international, whatever way you want to look at it, I've got to do my part and bloom where I am planted. Mm. And the closer I get to God, the more I have to reach out to other people. And the second book wow. will help you to develop that idea of relationship. Because without relationship to God and relationship to other people, there is no point in doing what we do. I love the way you're setting this up. I'm just cheering for this idea of relationship because you hear so little of this mm. in the Western Christian world. The Bonhoeffer Project right now mm. estimates that 90% of the people in the pews have never had a relationship with a disciple maker. They've wow. had none, 90%. And they further estimate from some fairly sophisticated studies that 80% of pastors have never had what you're talking about here, which is, if we go to the Old Testament again, the Bet Midrash. The Bet Midrash is that mid-phase, and it's essentially, we've talked about this in a few of our episodes, vocational tech school for Christians. It's where yeah. I learn, if I'm going to go learn how to weld or cook or work on a car, no less have we been called by Christ to have a Barbara mentor me and teach me what it means to be a disciple. And I can start imitating her and mm -hmm. seeing how she answers questions and watching how she relates to people. And I'm, I'm copying her. I am just learning about her. And in Beyond Discipleship, it sounds like you're setting us up for this Votech moment to learn how to relate imitate and get ready for what I think is going to be blooming for Christ. Absolutely. Where are we going with this one? Where are we going with that one? Just as this is part two of this in sequence, blooming for Christ is the beginning backward beyond discipleship ends where blooming for Christ begins. You disciple you get closer, and now you're going to get closer than close. You're intimate. You're growing godly intimacy when you're blooming mm. for Christ. Mm. The seeds have been sown, and here there is an analogy of the growth of a Christian compared to the growth of plants and therefore blooming for Christ. So it starts with that seed being sown whatever kind of ground that is. Mm. And it ends with maturity where the seed has blossomed and flourished. And you've got this beautiful uh, face of a flower, but then there are seeds in that pod. And so at full maturity, it bursts out and another whole set of seeds comes out. A set of seeds because of the one seed that sprouted and the cycle continues on and on. And that book walks you through that kind of journey. Uh, so growing godly intimacy, the more you spread God's word, the more you spread his love, the more you spread your faith and live a holy lifestyle that's fun and joyful mm -hmm. and exciting, the more you want to do it and you develop, as I say, intimate intimacy because you've got the relationship you've got the discipleship you've got your triads you've got your accountability partners that hold you responsible for who you say you are it's cyclical the the triads are moving like the wheel in the middle of a wheel and all of you are working this thing together and every now and then you come back together in a in a corporate body Maybe it's Sunday or Wednesday or Thursday evening, or maybe it's the annual whatever for your group or for your association. Uh, and you come together and you feed from each other and then you go out and you do it again. And it's so exciting for the Lord, blooming for Christ, developing and growing godly intimacy because you're not cloaking salvation. You're talking about that as the, the basis of what it is that you do. I can't forget that the reason that I sit in this chair is because I'm saved by God's grace. Grace is nothing but God's unmerited favor 
I didn't do anything to earn it, to buy it. All I have to do is accept Jesus Christ as my Savior, as my Savior. And that's what I have to feed into the world that he gives me. This is a killer app. Here's the way it works. So Bloom for Christ strikes me as the final stage in discipleship, the Bet Talmud. This is where the mentor has taken the disciple who has tried very hard to learn how to imitate her and to think like her and to answer like her. And she's beginning to take him out into the street, out into the community, out into the real world. And the interesting part about the Bet Talmud is that the professor, the <laughs> disciple maker, begins to fade back That's and right. push that disciple out live, blooming That's right. into the real world. And suddenly the professor is not even around anymore. But that disciple maker has made sure that that triad or that wingman or that partner is alongside right. that disciple as they move forward to go out. Is, am I putting words? You are right on top of things. Yes, sir. You can call it whatever you want to call it, but that's what it is. You start with that seed being planted and the professor, the disciple maker does take a back seat. But when you're needed, you know, those conference hours are available. Speed dial is available. Yeah, yes, right? yes, yes, yes. Just like Jesus is available all the time, sometimes he wants us to be available to work with his folks. And that's why I consider myself a, a, a spiritual body builder. And so he put me here to help build the body of Christ. And I do that in this trilogy. I do that in my Haven for Ravens. I do that in my podcast. I do that in my one-on-ones. I do that with my preaching, my teaching, and whatever it is that Favor by the Father Ministries does. That's what it is. Folks, we're talking to Dr. Barbara Rian, who is a pastor, preacher, teacher, speaker, reading teacher, the host of the Unbox podcast, and the author of these three books we've just been talking about, and I suspect quite a bit more if we looked at, at her prolific writing skills. I'm just thinking about this from a standpoint of the, the statistics that I'm wading through in the world of discipleship. This piece here, Reach Me With Smiles, is describing that world of becoming aware of who I am as an identity in Christ. And I think the Western church is doing a pretty good job there. We've got great pastors okay. who preach great word. We've got a lot of resources out on the internet that a lot of nations, a lot of countries don't have access to. We've got rich resources in the bookstores, rich resources in our churches. But it's interesting to me that as we get right to this wall where Beyond Discipleship picks up and where mm -hmm. Blooming for Christ picks up, 90% of the folks in the pews never went through this experience. They've wow. never been there. I love where this conversation is going. Talk to Bar Dr. Barbara Breon, who is a pastor, teacher, preacher, and she has done a lot of coaching and consulting for folks. You've got these three wonderful books, and now we're about to do something I don't get to do very often. We're about to actually watch a disciple maker talk to a disciple who looks like a pretty powerful disciple maker herself. Would you help the church think more about discipleship? Would you help us get the conversation started to talk about the biblical discipleship Jesus gave us? Please follow us. Our website, www.thediscipledilemma.com. You can find us on YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and all the RSS feeds. If you'd follow or like us, you'll help us get leverage in the digital marketplace to talk about the fact that discipleship needs to be talked about. And as always, folks, thanks for listening. 